I need to have something in my hand too. <laughs> With the coffee, we look like a morning show. <laughs> As you may know, we've decided on what car we're going to get for Evie. A Bronco! A new Ford Bronco. So far, here's what has occurred. In July of last year, on July 14th, I put a $100 refundable deposit down on a Bronco on the off chance that maybe we'd want to buy one. We had no clue we were moving to the mountains, so it's pretty weird that <laughs> Asked Micah, set future Micah up so nicely. Yeah, we did not know we were going to move to the mountains, and so uh, a Bronco deposit seemed silly, but it's like, eh, it's only $100, it's refundable, we'll it's see what so happens. It's so retro! <laughs> yes, so uh, cut to a few weeks ago, I get an email from a dealer dude uh, down in Long Beach where we used to live, and in the subject line it says, Bronco, urgent, two exclamation points. Oh, wow. We had talked about getting a Bronco and then uh, kind of backed away from it a little bit because it's like, oh, there are going to be all these dealer markups and that kind of thing. And then we found out there wouldn't be dealer markups, so maybe it's back on the table. Yeah, sure enough, no markups, so okay. I normally wouldn't pay MSRP, but it's a special new vehicle, so what the heck. So what we did is we did the configurator on Ford.com, went through and uh, specified exactly what we wanted, printed that out, well, I made a PDF, and then sent it to the dealer guy, and then three days later, we got confirmation that our Bronco had been ordered. So we haven't driven it, you haven't even driven it, even though you have a special automotive journalist privileges, but if for any reason we don't feel fully on board with the Bronco experience, we don't have to accept delivery. Literally, the only money we've given to Ford so far is $100 in refundable deposit. So that's, that's what we're on the hook for. That said, I would be shocked if the Bronco arrived and uh, we found it so disagreeable that we would not accept it. Because it seems to meet our needs and so many other ways. Yeah, so where we are right now is we're waiting for confirmation of the build. So basically what Ford's done is they've accepted all the different orders and then they're gonna figure out what the best way is to produce them. Just felt like time for a <laughs> coffee. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, so and they're... now a commercial break. <laughs> And this video is sponsored by Flying Eyes Sunglasses. Flying Eyes, they're good in the sky and they're good on the ground. <laughs> but not on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Where are those glasses? Dang it. <laughs> they're actually very good on his face. Now look what you're making me do. I'm sorry. You had to stand, you had to put your coffee down. Flying Eyes Sunglasses, I'll happily wear them indoors. And I'll take them off so you guys can see me again. <laughs> So the timing according to Ford is deliveries beginning in the summer of 2021. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but the way it works is that we'll get an email when our vehicle is scheduled for production, and then they will tell us when it's been built, and then they will tell us when it has been delivered. So you get to follow the process, and we'll be sure to keep you guys updated on each of those steps. What you're probably wondering is, how did we equip our Bronco? Sweetie, let them know what we got. <laughs> We got a cactus gray four door. We went four doors because I know the two door configuration is a little smaller, better on trails, but 99% of the time I use the Bronco, I will be putting a small child in the back and attempting to buckle her belt. So the four door just made a lot more sense for us. Plus I have uh, parents that might want to go on the trails with us. Oh yeah, and, ha and, ha and having only four <laughs> seats would be a problem. So having a five seater with uh, more cargo space and more rear seat legroom just made a lot of sense. So you might be wondering why we went with the Big Bend series. The reason why we went Big Bend is because we were able to add the mid package. If you go base, you can't add the mid package and the Big Bend allows you to do that. What's so special about the mid package? It's got all the things I demand in a new car. <laughs> then it must have keyless access. Yes. <laughs> Lumbar support? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's the professional here? Uh, it also has heated front seats, which is great because we are weak-willed flatlanders who have moved to the mountains and uh, we need toasty tukuses. Dual zone climate control because my lady likes things a little bit warmer than me. Of course, backup sensors. Um, there's a camera back there, but it's nice to have the reinforcement of uh, the sensors. Deet, 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 deet. Sweetie, I appreciate that. Don't hit that thing. <laughs> and then, of course, Ford's Copilot 360 system, which is basically all of the active driver assists that you've never had. So things like lane keeping assist, um, forward collision warning, and it also has blind spot monitoring. This is gonna be the largest vehicle you've ever driven on a regular basis. Oh, so right. I know you'll have maybe a little bit of insecurity about outward visibility. 
Yeah, so I really appreciate that we got all the safety features with it. Yeah, and what's mind blowing to me is that all of that stuff is coupled in a package that's only $1,500. So to me, that is a no brainer. Definitely get that. I'm really excited about this. We got keypad access to enter the vehicle because when you're going off on a walk, it's nice to leave your keys behind. Totally, and it's only $110. What's really interesting is that um, recently we drove the Subaru Outback and it has a keypad access system too. That video hasn't come out yet, but oh mercy, is that a convoluted system. Having a pad with actual numbers on it makes a lot of sense. We also got the tube steps, so um, the shorties in the house, which is basically everybody but me can <laughs> climb right. aboard. Which you had to not get a package you were interested in so that you could get those side steps, right? Yeah, if we'd gone one level up to, what is it, Black Diamond, then it automatically adds rock rails, so then you're paying for stuff that you're going to have to take off to put on the other stuff you'd want, so it just made sense to stick with the Big Ben. Oh, and then the other big thing, what top did we get? We got the soft top. I would love at some point to add a white hard top, mm -hmm. just because I love that contrasting color yeah. theme. Yeah. But the soft top will be great because we love to go off-roading and um, feel the breeze in our hair, and our little girl especially loves that. And the top sort of speaks to some of the logic in how we selected our vehicle. Basically, my philosophy was get everything from the factory that you need to get from the factory, and that if there are things that you want that can be better served by the aftermarket, just save those for later. So the soft top is really neat. I've seen some of the functionality and how it works and I think it's going to work great for us. But a hard top would make sense. Currently, you can't get a white hard top. At some point, you will be able to get a white hard top. We will get a hard top when that is available to us. It's a shame that they put it in all of the pictures. I know, That's right? That's why I want a white hard yeah. top. <laughs> it looks so cool. <laughs> Powertrain is another space where we made some, I guess, maybe interesting decisions. We decided to go with the base 2.3 liter engine, and you're probably thinking, Micah, you're getting a Bronco, you're not gonna get the big engine? Here's the thing, uh, whatever receptors are in my brain that derive pleasure from speed, just pure acceleration, have been worn out through many, many years of automotive journalism, and she doesn't wanna go fast, so True. there's really not much point in getting the 2.7. The, the other thing is that a two, the 2.3 liter EcoBoost is plenty powerful. You've never had a vehicle with 270 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot by Sweetie standards. <laughs> it really is. Mm -hmm. Let's take a measured approach. One thing that we had discussed a little bit was transmission choice. Oh, yes. So I have driven a manual for many, many years. When we had our child, I switched to an automatic just because I am such a distracted driver these days. I want one less thing to have to worry about. Yeah, so we thought about getting that seven speed manual, which would have been cool, but uh, that is one more element to think about, both when you're driving with our daughter and doing car-to-car -car footage. Yeah. And also, the uh, second-hand market, we are going to buy and hold on to this Bronco for a really long time, which is something we'll get to in a second. But uh, if you try and sell a manual transmission a little down the road, I'm just not sure there's going to be a huge market for it. So we went with the 10-speed automatic. I guess the last option that we selected, and this is a big one, Sasquatch package which feels like overkill, but hear me out. Do we need 35 inch tires, locking front and rear differentials, slightly raised suspension? Um, do we need those beadlock wheels? That really feels like overkill for the kind of off-roading I'm going to be doing, but I appreciate knowing that no matter how poorly I choose to go down the trail, the car can handle it. That is the thing. So it's way over prepared, but that yields a certain confidence that is really helpful if you're somebody who's new to off-roading. That's so true. I feel so much better when we go off-road in something I know is highly capable. Yeah, and the other thing, going back to that philosophy of get things from the factory that are best got from the factory, trying to do all that stuff via the aftermarket, adding electronic lockers uh, and, you know, all of that stuff after would probably cost more than the roughly $5,000 uh, $5, asking price for the Sasquatch package. Also, the bigger tires and wider fenders look really cool. There, I said it. <laughs> That's really the motivation. <laughs> there can be multiple motivations. So all in grand total for our Big Bend Sasquatch Soft Top Cactus Gray keypad equipped 
Bronco is just about 45,000, a touch above, which is a really big deal for us. That's a lot of money. That's only $5,000 more than the average transaction price for a modern vehicle right now in America, but it's a lot of money for us. Um, but the way we're, I guess, kind of justifying it is that when we buy something, we do a ton of research, uh, and then we buy something and hold on to it. We basically, much like our relationship, we choose <laughs> and we commit. <laughs> we're in. We're in. And also, we're, we plan to share the vehicle, so that's a savings as well. We don't have to purchase a vehicle that meets my needs and a vehicle that meets your needs. Yeah, instead of getting an off-roader and a vehicle that uh, Evie feels comfortable driving long distance to visit family and that kind of stuff, we've got one vehicle that supports both of those needs. Nonetheless, it is a big purchase for us. So expensive. But we think it'll be a really interesting thing to track our journey and to see what our experience is like. So that brings some value to you guys. We think it'll be interesting from a video perspective and we're gonna stick with it through thick and thin. <laughs> So that's what we decided. We went with the Big Bend. What do you guys think? What would you do if you were buying a Bronco? How would you equip it? And have we made a massive mistake? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I'm sure you'll tell us. Yeah. How are we wrong with our selection? <laughs> tell us in the comments. <laughs> are you excited to own a Bronco though? I'm really excited. There's more capability in this vehicle than any vehicle I've ever had. I usually go practical, like with the CRV, or small and cute, like with the Mini. So I'm really excited to have something that um, serves another purpose that I can do something besides just drive around on the streets with. And if it makes you feel better, we went with the second lowest trim. There are many more expensive <laughs> ways that you, you could have gone Bronco. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to drive the Bronco uh, and eventually own one. And so it'll be kind of neat to share that experience with you guys. So thank you for joining us on our Bronco journey. Thank we'll see you guys next time. Bye.